Hi everyone, welcome to page one. I'm Zita Christian. If you like to read about handsome, sexy, larger than life heroes and beautiful, fiercely independent heroines, you'll like the stories penned by our guest tonight. She writes for Harlequin Presents the most successful line at the most successful romance publishing house in the world. Please join me in welcoming Sandra Martin. Sandra, I'm so glad you could be here tonight. Oh, thank you for asking me, Zita. It's a pleasure. Good, good, good. Now, I was just mentioning here the introduction about how successful Harlequin is. Yes. Now, as another romance writer, I know that. But I know there are people in the audience who are not aware. So I want to throw out just a little bit of information. As I said, they are the world's largest romance publisher. Now, the September 21 issue of Time magazine had an article in there about romance. Talks about how publishing houses are saved by romance. And mentions specifically Tour Stars Harlequin, publisher of, as they say, steamy novels, remains a hot spot in a tepid industry. In the first six months of the fiscal year, one of the giants, Random House, reported sales down 4%, while Harlequin revenues were up 8.7% to $225.5 million in the first half of the year. Hugely successful. So Sandra, you and I know, but for the sake of people in the audience, what do you think the appeal is of romance fiction? I, there was a time I would have been tempted to say the happy ending, and that's still very important, but of course we're not all into happy endings um, in romance anymore. They're more realistic than that. But speaking for, for the, the imprint I write for, Presents, I think the real appeal is that a woman can fall into a fantasy world. I don't mean a fantasy in terms of science fiction um, or a fantasy in terms of, of anything um, remotely approaching that. I mean a fantasy in terms of finding the perfect man who will make her life more complete because romance heroines are generally complete to begin with. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the main appeal of romance fiction. It takes a woman out of, out of her normal day. It's a treat at the end of the day to sit back and enter a world where things are not predictable, but where things are going to lead to something bright and shining in the future. You know what I realized when I read the, the book that's out now, which we'll get to in a second? I realized that when you think about these successful romantic movies that are out, whether it's a, a, a drama or a romantic comedy, I mean, I could just name, just go down the list. I mean, there's, you know, Pretty Woman and Sleepless in Seattle, and uh, I can't think of some of them now, but they're all. The, the basic storyline that you would find in a Harlequin novel. Yes, absolutely. Because the focus is on the relationship. That's correct. I love that. So let us talk here now about your books. Uh, who are these Orsini brothers? Well, I, I should start by telling you that one of the things that I love to do is to create series, mini-series we call them. Mm -hmm. They're really sagas, family sagas. I've been doing it for a number of years. Um, my my editor at the time was wary when I first suggested something like that. Um, they had not done that before. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, and it subsequently turned out that right after they said, okay, go ahead and try it, um, there was a lot of discussion as to whether readers would be interested in reading a continuing story of a family. It's worked out very well for me and I would think for my publisher as well because that's mm -hmm. become really my forte. The Orsini brothers are Sicilian-American. They are, as almost all my heroes are, self-made. In this instance, they start life with a lot of money and power because their father is, he is an important man in, in what we would delicately refer to as La Familia mm -hmm. in New York. But they reject him and his way of life and, and find their own way. There are four of them. And four brothers. Four, four brothers. Um, and the books that are out now, uh, the first book concerns the first brother, Raphael. The second book is about Dante. 
And next year, there will be two others about the two remaining brothers, Falco and Niccolo. All right, now we have copies of the first two books. Let's take a look at the right. hardcover book, the one with the, the pink cover down here in the front. And uh, the, this first one, the one that is the November release, this is Raphael's story. Yes. Taming His Tempestuous Virgin. A very enticing, a very enticing title and a very sexy cover. Yes, it's a gorgeous cover, is it not? Yes, I was it is. really delighted. I mean, the, you know, because you, yeah, yeah. you, you are in the You don't business. always get a good cover. No, sometimes and you look a at nice your cover one. and you say, oh, that, that's not who my people are. This is a gorgeous cover. Yeah. Yeah. Th this is beautiful. And, and that and book, of course, is, that book is an, a British library edition in hardcover. Ah. Presents is published, well, of course, it presents is published in the United States, but initially the books are bought and edited through Harlequin's British office. Oh, I didn't realize that. And that's where my editor is. It's where all editorial work for the line takes place. And these books in hardcover are published primarily for libraries in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And then you get the paperback edition. In, well, there's here. a paperback, and there's a paperback in the United Kingdom. And then, of course, there's the paperback here in the United States. And that's, that's the presents paperback, so-called. OK. So that, the, the um, Raphael story is the November, but now coming in December. Dante. Dante's story. Yes. And the title for Dante's story? Uh, claiming his secret love child. I, I, uh, okay. There's some discussion in our industry, as you know also, about titles. Oh, yes. And uh, I am pleased to say that my publisher has now been somewhat responsive to that, and they are looking at titles that are possibly less specific and less descriptive. Well, it, it gives, I don't say it gives away the plot, but it does, I mean, in, in a way. It, it's okay, it gives it, away. It, <laughs> yeah, it does, it does. Yeah. Um, but, but still, the appeal really is not so much what happens, it's how it happens. That's correct, because yeah. um, one, of, one, of the, one of the things that Presents is noted for is um, the difference in voices among all of its authors. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can you can take the same three kinds of plots, give them to three of us, and you'll never get anything that, that you you will not get one book approximating another. Because we are we are such different writers. Of course. Well, I've always contended that you know you can do that in a room full of writers and in, in, in a class or something and say, here if there are twenty of you and say you know here are the, sure. the basic basic elements of a plot, and you'll get all different stories. Yes, that's but, true. But, you know, I think about something l like this one, the claiming the secret love child, that speaks to the in the shorthand in the romance industry of the secret baby book. Yes. That's so popular. You know, the yes. man from the past, the, the dangerous man, the clash with two worlds, the certainly the secret baby, the marriage of convenience. I mean, there's certain shorthand. Yes, and I think it's because, because the kind of hero who is, as you say, a dangerous hero, at least who has that edge of danger to him, and who is very sexy and sexual, and then who turns out to also have a softer side, mm -hmm. um, is a very appealing kind of man to women everywhere. Yes. So that's a perfect lead in, Sandra, for talking about the characters mm -hmm. in your story, because um, I know you and I are both members of Novelist Inc which is a, an organization of multi-published fiction writers. Mm -hmm. And there's been a discussion online, I mean, I mean a very big discussion, about the difference between an alpha male and a beta male, or an alpha hero and a beta hero. What do you think is the difference? I think that I can't believe the discussion is still going on <laughs> because literally this has been, I've been in this business, oh my, my first book was published here in 1986. That's quite some time mm -hmm. for this discussion to have had, as they say, legs. My own feeling is I'm no longer sure if using the phrase alpha is, is as, as positive as it should be because over the years people have ascribed traits to the alpha male designation um, that are inappropriate. Perhaps omega is, is almost a better framework for it. My own definition of an alpha male has never changed. Um, and I see an alpha male in, in the real world and in the fiction world in the similar light. He is a man who is assertive, but not aggressive. There's a huge difference. A big difference, yes. A man who is a leader, but not a dominator. Again, a huge difference. 